You're watching Oklahoma's News 4 at 6. Air Comfort Solutions Chopper 4 over the scene of breaking news. Three people just rescued after being trapped on the rocks in the Oklahoma River. Those three people in danger because of all the rushing water. News 4's Jessica Bruno on the ground with the breaking details. Jess, update us. Yeah, Jolene and Eli, as you can see behind me, crews just now breaking down the scene. Fortunately, according to fire officials here on scene, those three people are okay. They were trapped for about 40 minutes, so thankfully they're going to be okay. They just left the scene a few moments ago with MSA to be checked out just as a precaution. As you're seeing there on your screen, we have some video of that rescue, of those three people rescued by boat. Uh, what fire officials tell me is they think they were likely uh, fishing when the gates open, rushing the uh, water in, a lot of water there rushing into a normally shallow area, so that's how they got stuck. And again, they were stuck for about 40 minutes. They're doing all right, so that's the good news here this morning. Again, as you can see, it seems like crews are now clearing the scene. Reporting live at Eastern and I-40, Jessica Bruno, Oklahoma's News 4. Thank you, Jessica. And right now at 6, a community in mourning. Lexington Middle School football player Riley Boatwright collapsed during last night's game. He was rushed to the hospital where he later passed away. Tonight, he's being remembered by two of his best friends. News Force Kelsey Hill is in Lexington tonight. A young life cut short. Riley's friends describe him as outgoing and having never met a person he didn't like. Probably the greatest person or friend you can ask for. He'll talk to anybody. It doesn't matter if they're who they are or how old they are, he'll talk to them. Riley Boatwright, Ian K. Wood, and Cole Zedeker did everything together from hunting to fishing. So he was laying down on the dock and I just made one last cast. I wasn't even looking, just flipped it over there. And I caught like a seven pound smallmouth right in front of him. And he started screaming and going crazy over it. Riley also liked to do what they call cowboy work. We hauled hay, we ducked our calves, just anything fix fence build fence or we'd be on the tractor doing something everything really mm -hmm. one of riley's favorite pastimes was to ride horses being on the horses he loved to be on the horses no matter what we were doing on them and, uh, that was kind of his go-to horse ian's dad mickey k wood says Actually, he loved yeah. riley like a son i think if somebody set out and was going to hand pick a son as a young man it would be riley boatwright he just he was just uh, that kind of a kid. He just, he's a kid everybody wants their kid to grow up and be. He was just polite and nice and well-mannered and a fantastic young man. In Lexington, Kelsey Hill, Oklahoma's News 4. Also this evening, a man posing as a teen boy arrested here in Oklahoma for allegedly asking young girls from across the country to send him nude pictures of themselves. State agents tracked down Jacoma Sanders in Westville after they were tipped off by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. During the OSBI investigation, they discovered Sanders had not only asked for naked pictures from those girls in other states, but also right here in Oklahoma, a girl here. Sanders been in trouble before. He's required to register as a sex offender after being convicted of soliciting sex from a minor, and that was back in 2015. A sorority and fraternity at Oklahoma City University under fire tonight, all over an incident involving a racial slur. That incident involved the Alpha Phi sorority and Kappa Sigma frat. It all happened during a sorority soccer tournament. Members of the two Greek houses chose to name their team the Porch Monkeys. The name was changed after other members intervened. The university saying tonight that this behavior will not be tolerated on the OCU campus and that the student code of conduct process is at work. In the meantime, students are speaking out. A lot of the groups on campus, the cultural groups on campus, don't feel supported, have often said that they don't feel safe on our campus. Um, and that's, you know, I, I hate hearing that. This is not the first racially charged incident on the Oklahoma City University campus. Earlier this month, two campus officers resigned after one was accused of racial profiling. And more breaking news here from Air Comfort Solutions Chopper 4. A car now reported to be in the river. This is near I-40 and Western. Pilot Mason Dunn is over the scene. Yeah, as we zoom in on the car here, this is uh, the Oklahoma River at Western. Here we have emergency crews on the bridge. This car looks like it may have been in the water for quite some time, but the call came in just a short while ago. Now the rescue we were just at, they're letting water out of the dam, so it may have lowered the water and exposed the top of this vehicle here. So 
Emergency crews are on the scene. Uh, they may be bringing the boat from the rescue, which is just a couple miles to the east of us over here to check out uh, and see what's going on with this car in the water. Mason Dunn reporting from Air Comfort Solutions. Chopper 4, back to you. Thank you, Mason. Also tonight, the price of freedom. An Oklahoma man walks out of prison after being locked up for nearly two decades. Well, thank God for getting me out. Well, that was Willard O'Neill outside of the Tulsa County Courthouse earlier this month. Just minutes ago, after being set free for a murder, the DNA evidence says he did not commit. But as happy as this day was, O'Neill is still facing a struggle to regain control of his life. News Force Cassandra Sweetman is here to explain why. Cassandra. Jolene, here's where O'Neill is having trouble. Because he wanted to get out of prison, he took a deal, pleading no contest to second degree murder. Because of that plea, he now has no right to any money from the state for the nearly 20 years he was locked up. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm lost for words, really, and, and I'm just excited. That's all I can say. I'm blessed. Willard O'Neill's first moments as a free man, following more than 17 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. He found out his DNA was not on any of the items that were recovered from the crime scene. Vicki Behenna with the Oklahoma Innocence Project helped negotiate O'Neill's release. She says he's likely feeling the shock and euphoria that comes with walking away from a life sentence without parole. Well, that euphoria wears off when the realities of life set in. And for O'Neill, reality will be particularly difficult. For people who are exonerated of a crime they did time for, the state will compensate them with $175,000. Praise God, and I'm free. But O'Neill will get nothing. That's because he took a deal with the district attorney, pleading no contest to murder two. He's innocent of this murder. He's innocent of this murder. However, by taking the deal, O'Neill was able to avoid years more of jail time and the possibility a judge still wouldn't exonerate him. He wanted to get out to his mother as soon as possible. This made it worth me to come home to her. This made it worth it. Now with a second degree murder conviction, O'Neill can't file a civil suit and he's also not eligible for help through the Innocence Project. To just be kind of thrown out with nothing is just not fair. So Jamie Campbell and some of her fellow OCU law students who worked on his case are raising money for the man who lost nearly two decades of his life. They've already been forgotten about for so long while they were sitting in prison. And I think it's just important to make sure that we're helping them. The OCU students set up a GoFundMe page to raise money for basic things like clothing and shoes for work, maybe even a car, anything to help O'Neill reestablish life. That page can be found on our website at KFOR.com. Eli. What a mess. Cassandra, thank you. Tonight, remembering T. Boone Pickens, the larger-than-life oil tycoon whose generosity almost single-handedly put OSU football on the map, many referring to that stadium that bears his name as the house that Boone built. And tonight, News 4's Jacqueline Chapel is live for us. Jacqueline, hundreds turned out to honor T. Boone. Governor Kevin Stitt, OSU President Burns Hargis, and even head football coach Mike Gundy all spoke at today's event just a few hours ago. Hundreds of people packed inside of Gallagher Iba Arena to say goodbye to Boone Pickens. I don't think anything in Boone's life, anything, certainly there were people, but I don't think anything is as special to Boone Pickens as OSU. The nation's brightest orange celebrating the life of one of its most beloved cowboys. During a celebration of life, friends and family, along with OSU students and staff, said goodbye to T. Boone Pickens, the oil tycoon passing away at the age of 91. I just don't know anybody in the Cowboy family that has contributed more, not just in money, but in leadership to Oklahoma State, like Boone. I mean, he's everything you could have ever asked for. We were so fortunate that Texas A&M cut his scholarship. Pickens made millions during his time working in the oil industry, also later becoming a philanthropist. He is known for donating over $1 billion, much of that going to Oklahoma State, where he graduated from in 1951 with a degree in geology. The millions given by Pickens to the athletic department put OSU on the national map. We've had a history of not playing by the rules, NCAA violations and he made it real clear that the only thing that he expected in return for the big gift was that we work hard or play hard 
uh, that we dream big and by gosh, you better play by the rules. Even students who never met the man know what he did for the university. I think he did a lot for donation wise and just building our school up, making it better. His donations and love for his alma mater to be remembered for years to come. Boy, weren't we lucky that he was in our life and were we not so lucky that he was on our team. And the university does have plans to memorialize Boone in a, in a statue outside of Boone Pickens Stadium. They are taking to the public to help fund that. If you want to help out, there's a website over, there's a link over on our website, rather, over at KFOR.com. Reporting live here in Stillwater, Jacqueline Chapel, Oklahoma's News 4. An incredible legacy. Jacqueline, thank you. A new road downtown proving to be dangerous for some drivers. When the light turned green, where do I go and how do I proceed through it? Tonight, how to avoid the confusion and what's being done that may help you out. All right, I see the fire truck now. It's over here uh, east. Okay, we got it inside now. Uh, should be right in there, yep. I could hit the side. And more breaking news here from Air Comfort Solutions Chopper for a car now reported to be in the river near I-40 in Western. Pilot Mason down over the scene. He just left that scene and now we are going to I-40 and I-44. This is where a tire hit some sort of a transport vehicle, an ambulance perhaps, Mason. Okay, if we zoom in on, on the uh, white car that the tire came off of, this is uh, 
westbound I-40 at I-44. If you zoom in there, you can see just barely in the front that the tire is missing. Now that tire went across the highway and struck this medical van that was traveling eastbound that you see right there. Now they were transporting a patient. Now the other side, uh, we'll try to fly on the other side. I won't have time during this report, but the other side, the window is busted on the other side. We're not sure, and the, and the uh, van is dented up. So not sure what happened to the tire. We'll be looking for that, but uh, that's something you don't want to see is a tire coming at you, uh, coming down the highway here as it has gone through a medical van uh, here at I-40 and I-44. Mason Dunn reporting from Air Comfort Solutions. Chopper 4, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Mason. Also tonight, the new Oklahoma City Boulevard proving dangerous for some drivers. Specifically, where the new boulevard crosses Reno and Klein. News 4's Emily Akins took our mobile newsroom to see what's going on for herself. Oklahoma City police tell us here at the intersection of Klein Avenue and Oklahoma City Boulevard, just in the past month, there have been 11 wrecks. When the light turned green, where do I go and how do I proceed through it? A stretch of Oklahoma City Boulevard causing a headache for drivers. Two intersections that have only been fully accessible for a month. The first at Klein Avenue with 11 wrecks alone there and four more on other parts of the roadway just since it opened. The fact that accidents are happening at the Klein and Boulevard intersection is concerning to us. The Department of Transportation says it's still a work in progress. Klein.